Aloha. This is Think Tech Hawaii, and uh, this is uh, the show Politics for the People. I'm your host, Stephanie Sol Dalton, and our topic is how Biden can build back better for his presidency from, uh, and save it from the currently descending poll numbers and rising disapproval ratings. Welcome also to the panelists uh, who are our guests today to, to join in the discussion of this issue. And uh, that we want to say hello to, to Jay Fidel and Tim Apicella and Winston Welch. So welcome to the program and being on the panel. Now, moving on to our questions for the day, um, to start the discussion, um, Jay Fidel, you know, Biden's uh, first year ratings seem to more reflect his misses and ignore his gains. But what does he do now with this feedback that he has from the polls uh, and on the and the disapproval uh, data? So can you talk, tell us what you're thinking about this and what uh, he can do? Hmm. Well, I start by saying, well, it's a combination of his own mistakes, which it's hard to get away from, and um, the Republicans attacking him. And those two things, you know, they interact and make it hard for him. And, um, and some, some of the, his appointees aren't working well. Um, you know, I, to, to, um, you get Merrick Garland, who manages to spend more time making decisions that you and I and my puppy can make almost immediately. Um, and um, he, he takes uh, weeks, months to do it. Really remarkable. Um, I, I'm not sure that Tony Blinken is doing what I would want him to do in terms of uh, foreign policy. And uh, there was an article recently about Ron Klain, uh, who I thought was uh, a really good pick. Maybe he's not so good a pick. So uh, Blinken has surrounded himself. And then, of course, he's, he's really vice presidential in his approach to things. And he's gonna try to work it all out. And now after a year of, of being beat up and uh, undermined by the, the GOP, he's, he's realizing that you can't negotiate somebody who is determined not to negotiate with you. Um, you know, I mean, any first year lawyer could tell you that. So uh, I, I, don't know if there's, I don't know if there's anything much he can do because it's, it's a momentum now. It's, it defines his presidency. A year is a long honeymoon. Um, you know, if he were going to change his approach, his style, he would he would become stronger, more consistent. He would get his cabinet to be stronger, more consistent, um, and he would, you know, uh, generally act in a more mm, affirmative leadership way. Uh, one of the things that uh, was in the article, I think Winston sent around this morning, which I was very impressed. Uh, was that they, that's Biden and his, and his administration, as well as all of us have to cope with people on the other side of the, of the spectrum, the aisle, um, who are you know, determined to bring him down and bring the country down. This is very hard to do because the old techniques, you know, the old strategies don't really apply. He has to be stronger than he might have otherwise been. He has to take more affirmative stances. He has to deal with pathological people, um, you know, who are taking pathological positions. This is hard for anyone, any one of us, but it's especially hard for him because it's not his style. We know his style is not like that at all. So he's got to learn on the job. He's got to learn soon. He's got to learn now that his whole orientation has to be different. He has to, you know, speak truth to power. He has to um, you know, take steps to argue back. Um, he has to make it clear that he's on the high road. He has to tell us what we already know. Uh, he has to repeat what he said, just the way Republicans do. Um, and, and he has to, you know, uh, speak to people who are very hard to speak to. Um, and finally, and my, this is my biggest point of all, if he wants to recover his administration, he's got to develop a Democratic Party infrastructure around the country. He's got to activate anyone who would claim to be in the Democratic Party, be part of his organization. Um, and I guess one last point is, frankly, um, he's got to find somebody, uh, maybe a couple of people who will be on the uh, Democratic ticket for 2024. He should not run. He should okay. get somebody else to run. And he should do that right away. 
Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, you know, uh, the feedback, Tim, is pretty harsh in the polls. I mean, he's fallen almost as low as Trump and in patterns that are different from other presidents. What do you think about the feedback he's getting in the polls? Is that is that quality that Biden really ought to be paying attention to? Um, can you talk a little bit about how he might be processing all of this? Because he certainly yeah. has a lot of advice on the other side, too. So, yes. Yeah, Is he said he wasn't going to run his presidency based on polling. And I agree with that position. Um, however, Georgia just came out with a polling of his favorability rate. And he's gone from 60, 61 down to 33. That's that's pretty bad. Um, so you may not run your presidency based on polling, but you better listen to it and figure out what you're doing wrong. And I agree with Jay. He's got to take steps. Um, but steps, I think, is, is actions, and he, he needs to take actions. And one of the first actions, he's got to get his own party um, unified, and they're not. And uh, particularly that was uh, with Joe Manchin and, and Cinema. Um, that's, that's a disaster that's taken place, and that has egg all over his face. And, you know, that's part of the reason why he is dropped in the polling. Uh, I think in Afri uh, African Americans in Georgia have lost confidence in in Biden, and that's why his poll numbers are suffering the way they are. Um, he's got a long road to come back up on, and that is not easy once you're this far down. But he can do it, and I think he can do it in a couple of ways. One, they've got to stop coming in with the whole enchilada concept when they bring bills to the floor. Um, you know, I, I think the Build Back Better was the whole enchilada and the kitchen sink, too. And you got to stop that approach. You've got to get buy off and consensus on each portion of a bill that you want to bring in. And maybe you do break it up. Um, I know he thought he didn't have much time and that uh, the 2022 midterm elections would come and break up his uh, his ability to get anything done. But by bringing in such large packages for 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 legislation, um, that didn't work for him. That strategy has failed. So I would go back to Joe Manchin and Cinema and say, look, let's break up BBB. Let's find something that we can all agree on. Yeah, we're not getting three point trillion. We're not getting the one point seven five trillion. Let's settle on nine hundred nine hundred fifty billion of programs you can live with and the country will benefit from. And then you go to voting. You go to, again, some minuscule um, modification of the filibuster. And then you try to get Republicans on that, too. I don't think he's done a, lot, a whole lot on uh, reaching out to Republicans, certainly according to um, uh, Mitt Romney, that he reached out for them and tried to bring them over. Uh, so he needs to start on those two bills that have stalled and get going on that quick. And then some new initiatives. But uh, he's not going to build back his numbers if he doesn't get something going. Good, good points. Um, I, I think I'm hearing he needs to be more flexible in, in his uh, legislating plans. And um, do you think that he's uh, mimicking Obama in terms of going in with big things? Uh, and has that experience to draw? Yeah, I think, on? you know, yeah. I think that's what he has been doing. I, again, I... I don't blame him for what he was trying to do because he knows that he was going to lose the house in 2022, probably. And he thought, this is it. I got one year to get this stuff done, a year and a half. And so he went for it. He went for it. He, um, he went for the whole thing and didn't work out. So now he's got to salvage his attempt and uh, get that which he can get done uh, before the midterm elections. And who knows if he does get something done that people like, maybe he can salvage um, the 2022 midterm uh, vote. Okay. You know, I, I'm starting to hear Joe, Ma uh, Joe Biden's name in the same sentence as Jimmy Carter. Yeah. And that's not good. This is not good. Yeah. Well, um, thank you. That's uh, a, a very sad point uh, to end the comment on, but we can get back to it. And I, I Winston, I was wanting you to talk about whether... Um, he should uh, do something about the SCOTUS or the Supreme Court nomination. I just have to ask it. It just came up, you know, last night. So now that we have this new Supreme Court nomination, do you see in that process that he's going to go through um, any opportunities for him to score or not? What, what, how, how is that maybe going to work for him, him excuse me, you know, in, in light of what um, uh, Tim is saying? 
Well, I think her is right because, uh, and him, because he already, this is just a check that he wrote that's being cashed now. Um, obviously, there was some, you know, Stephen Breyer was looking at what happened with Ruth Bader Ginsburg and decided he needed to retire now rather than have this come up. But, you know, that said a lot of, um, she was very important uh, in her decisions and her uh, reasonings in the last years of, of her life. So, I, you know, these these justices, control when they are going to um, resign or or if they, you know, indeed die in office. So the thing is, is as soon as they announce this, the second they announce the media is it, it, they're already done and, and the media is all over it. What I thought was interesting, though, was that there wasn't a squawk from the Republicans. Lindsey Graham gave some little minor thing that says, oh, I suppose it'll it'll happen because Joe Biden controls the process now. Well, you know, we he's not been able to pass his, um, you know, build back better or whatever legislation he's wanted to get because of uh, Sistema and uh, and Mansion. But apparently, they're going to go for be part of this fifty vote block plus Kamala Harris to push any nomination he has over the uh, the line. And of course, he's already promised this to a, uh, a, a African American woman. And I think that uh, it's in the same way that he did for his vice presidential nomination. So those th that check was already written in some level, and he's just cashing it now. Um, I don't know that it will score points, maybe it will, but uh, it's his reasoning behind it was that the Supreme Court should look more like America. So in that regard, he's making this slow, steady progress. And Americans don't like slow, steady progress. They like, or they've been become accustomed to loud, noisy distraction um, and um, you know, random, seemingly random decisions that, that just have chaos everywhere because maybe, I don't know, it's more entertaining or it's just, a, 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 you know, exhausting to follow. I, I'm not sure what that was, but Joe Biden is not that fellow. Given that reality of uh, that Americans have a 30 second sound bite, not even 30 seconds, it's still the next TikTok comes in. I don't think it's 30 seconds long. He needs to send out his um, his legion of very competent, qualified uh, Democratic spokespeople in his cabinet, the Pete Booty judges, the Kamala Harris's, uh, whoever, the Amy Klobuchar's, the ones who aren't in his cabinet that uh, want to be um, there. They need to get Governor Newsom out there and 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 uh, putting forth the Democratic message and not even the Democratic with a big D, the Democratic with a small D. And in that, it was as Tim was saying or, or Jay was saying that he needs to reach out to the, the Mitt Romneys and the other folks and say, hey, you write this legislation. Uh, let's see what you can come up with. That if if you're really intent on salvaging um, our nation as we understand it to be, and I think Mitt Romney could be counted in that, and a lot of uh, people with an R after their name could be counted on that. Let them start writing this legislation, breaking the chains uh, that they're bound to right now, seemingly, because they don't want to be be beholden to one man or one um, uh, one person who controls that party at this point. Yeah, I'm glad that you got back to that because in uh, in saying he's going to push this nomination through based on the 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 tie and the Kamala Harris vote, but he's obviously just on the razor's edge now. And why is it that cinema will necessarily go along with this? Did you all see? Um, Winston, that, that the Republicans were all shaking hands with her. They did a zoom in with the little light at the end of the vote. And the Republic, she was standing there in the back at the door and, and they were all coming up and shaking her hand. So why is she going to go along with this uh, this Supreme Court nomination? You think this well, one that, That's a good question. And, and I don't know that she will. I mean, really, she could, she and, and Joe Manchin could very easily have an R after their name or if they wanted to make it more uh, politically correct or flexible an I for independent, but um, essentially um, there, she says certain things about voting rights and, and, and yet she's not delivering. So if she's really serious about those sorts of issues, let her write the legislation that she can feels that she can get past with her Republican friends and reach out across the aisle for something that's common sense that everybody can support uh, 
I don't know that she. Uh, it will. It would not surprise me if she voted against this. Uh, the uh, the candidates that have been, at least the initial ones that have been proffered. We don't know who's actually going to be, um, uh, you know, nominated to take this place. But let's just assume and hope and pray that it's somebody that she would not. Uh, she would be unwise to um, to go against, and that this person that. The, the, the qualifications will be impeccable. And I mean, look how fast you had, um, you don't, they, nobody wants another Brent Kavanaugh situation to come in. Look how fast Amy Comey Barrett went in. I think probably the, the Republicans realized it doesn't matter who they put in there. We still have six to three and that's not gonna change. Well, um, that that's interesting. Thank you. Um, well, Jay, let's switch over now uh, it, with Biden's dilemma to look at the international side of it. What is the game that Putin is playing? And is he going to play it? And which way? In to Ukraine or back off? What What do you think is going to happen and what should Biden do? Uh, I, I believe he's going to take Ukraine without firing a shot. Um, I think he's going to use uh, cyber attacks on Ukraine. He's going to use uh, political gambits on Ukraine. He's going to undermine uh, Zelensky. Uh, he's going to use uh, Germany uh, and the rest of the EU, um, you know, in a kind of um, propaganda war. Um, and he's going to essentially undermine the Ukraine government till the point where he gets to control it without firing a shot. Let's see what happens. You guys can bet me a pizza on that. Uh, there'll, there'll be no <laughs> there'll be no war. Um, <clears throat> but, uh, he's a very smart, very clever guy. And he has all kinds of tools in his toolkit. Um, and um, he's, he's, he's playing Biden. He's playing Blinken. I mean, this goes back to your first question. Um, they, they are likely to be embarrassed here. Uh, they are likely to, um, you know, wind up with egg on their face somehow because he's going to outsmart them. And he's, um, you know, he, he's very clever, very brutal. But let me go back to uh, some of the other points that have been discussed this morning, and that is, uh, for example, on on the uh, Stephen uh, Breyer um, re replacement. Um, uh, yeah, first of all, my view of um, cinema and uh, Ma Mansion is that they are Republican operatives. There's a deal there, hmm. and and they have done a marvelous job in screwing up Biden. They've made him wait. They've made him look bad. And the result, the outcome has been awful. Uh, they've done a just a remarkable job. You gotta hand it to them as Republican operatives. They really do have R's next to their names and that's not gonna change. Okay, so then you bring in an, a, a replacement for Stephen Brown. I believe he should have retired, retired a long time ago. He should have given Biden more time. You know, now Biden is up against a, a change in Congress on 2022. He'll be less powerful uh, after after November. <clears throat> but I think the Republicans are going to do everything they can possibly do in the current configuration of Congress to stop that nomination. Mm -hmm. And then if they, you know, if they if they win the Senate, which I think they will win the Senate um, starting 2023, There'll be no Biden candidate who's going to get through. But I, and I, even now, I don't think a Biden candidate is going to get through. They're going to find something wrong with them. They're going to concoct. They're going to cook up something or her. <clears throat> and um, there, there's going to be a fight on every candidate. There's going to be delay tactics on every candidate. Uh, and, they, and this is not only to stop uh, one relatively inconsequential member of the court, because it's still going to be the six to three. Um, it's to make Biden look bad, make the Democrats look bad, undermine their influence, their authority, their popularity. That's what's going to happen on the Supreme Court. I feel pretty clear about that. <clears throat> um, and the other thing is, um, you know, you talk about everybody has ideas, including that article you sent around this morning, which, which was so impressive, uh, Winston, <clears throat> about, um, you know, what, what can be done. The reality is not much can be done. You know, uh, you can't you can't change uh, the way Biden operates and you can't cast off the mistakes he's made. It's it's a very likely he's going to continue to make mistakes. B, it is very likely that the Republicans are going to attack everything he does. And C, the party is fragmented. 
And the fragmentation was a real undermine um, for the Build Back Better bill. They were fighting among themselves. I, I don't know how that's going to change. Uh, you need a strong leader who will bat heads. And he doesn't he doesn't qualify for that. So uh, I think, the, you know, we're going to have more of the same. It's going to continue. His ratings are going to be low. Uh, and that's why I say um, the only way out of this little trap uh, that, that, that Trump set for him, which is playing out now, uh, is for him to pick a ticket. Um, the regrettable thing there is there's nobody, nobody visibly, um, you know, capable uh, of doing that. And I don't know where that person comes from. But then we do have 330 million people. There must be somebody in the crowd who would qualify. Uh, Stephanie, uh, have you thought about this? Well, I like Buttigieg. I mean, there are numbers of them. I think you're right. There are among them. Well, I mean, have you thought about running? That have thought about running? Have you thought about running? Oh, yes, certainly. <laughs> I want to be the first female president. I, I think I can pass on that. But I certainly know other people that would be willing to take it on. But I think in that wonderful article, are you, I don't know if you're referring to the one Winston sent that was the seven points of how to. That's how the to, one. Yeah, yeah. So I know that Tim responded to it, uh, and I did too. And I wanted to go back and um, have a chance to just talk about that a little bit too, Tim. So I think that what Jay is saying to us is that he's not expecting a big change for Biden to do uh, a huge shift. Um, and that would mean not a shift in his rhetoric, okay, because that's one of the things that counts, according to that discussion, that piece in its discussion of how to sustain democracy and interfere with the um, uh, authoritarianism or um, autocracy. So one of the things is maybe he could, he looks like he's trying to ramp up the rhetoric. Let me know if you agree with me about that. But the, uh, the other one to talk about too, is if he can ramp up the rhetoric, to the point of getting attention paid and getting and be and being dignified, can he play the judo? The point of the judo, where the uh, game the the game rules are changed so that the uh, advantages of um, uh, what are, are you asking me this question or Tim? I was going to shift it over to Tim, but do you have something yeah. to say about this? Yeah, the answer is no. He can't. It's not in his DNA. He's not like that. He's had you know decades and decades of experience in government. We know his movie. We know how he operates, and he's not going to be able to change his spots. I'm sorry. Um, so you know that, that just supports my view that this is going to continue um, lurching from crisis to crisis, and uh, it's it, he's not capable of getting it resolved. F and furthermore, I would go back to something Tim said. Um, you know, the rhetoric is one the rhetoric is one thing, but you really have to have outcomes, scores. You have to have successes, uh -huh. and mm -hmm. query whether he's able to do that. Mm -hmm. Well, Tim, oh, do you I am. I yeah. just saw um, Don't Look Up movie last night, and I, I feel like this conversation is synonymous with a big meteorite hurling towards Earth for its destruction, or in this case, Biden's administration. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I don't quite take on Jay's uh, viewpoint on some of the stuff, and, I'll, and I guess I'll just go with uh, Mansion and Cinema putting an R by their name. I suppose we'll find out exactly where they stand when it comes to this Supreme Court nominee. And uh, in the old finance business and, and institutional investing, there's an old saying, the trend is your friend. So if you had both those uh, senators, uh, Nick's Build Back Better and the voting rights, um, and then the, if, if they nix the nomination that Joe Biden wants, then I would say that's a trend. And that would, that would put some weight behind Jay's words that... Um, they really should run as independents in the future because they're certainly not going along with the party, uh, the Democratic Party. Yeah, well, I see you're saying in the future, okay, because I mean, to change over from their position now is they lose power, uh, Tim. So yeah, I know that, end? yeah. Why and so they're not going to, but if, you know, if, if, if Biden and administration and all the other Democrats um, want to see them as their fellow colleagues, uh, that may be difficult if they buck the nominations, the nominee uh, that Joe Biden wants to set forth. So um, it's up to them. And then the bottom line is uh, Joe Biden's in trouble. But uh, I, I don't think I think he can reverse things. I think he's got still a, a very good staff. 
that and Joe, Joe Biden does listen to people. I think that's a good quality that President Biden has versus uh, President Trump. Uh, he actually will listen to the people he's surrounded himself with. And I think they can turn this around. But again, without accomplishments, uh, forget it. He's going to be a lame duck. And I also disagree a little bit with Jay about finding an, um, someone on the ticket for the next term. Uh, that would telegraph to everybody that he's a lame duck for the next three years. And I don't mm -hmm. think he needs that. That's a good so uh, that he may, you know, play these exercises in his mind and and do a little on the back of a napkin on who he thinks should uh, take over, but uh, certainly not make any overtures or even any conversations with anybody about it, because Washington, D.C. leaks like a sieve and you don't want that to leak out because then he will be a lame duck. Yeah, well, those are those are good comments. Thank you. Um, Winston. Um, I wanted to just jump back to the judo question where that the, the GOP has been so successful with, you know, in using the benefits and advantages of democracy against itself, okay, um, which uh, they've done over and over again. So can you talk about whether Biden has the capacity to maybe move into doing some of that himself? I mean, that's a pretty complicated game if you don't know it, but can he start to play something like that? And would that help? Well, uh, you know, for, for our gentle uh, viewers who may be uh, wondering where the article that uh, that we're talking about, it was okay. written by uh, Try Give Try Give Olson, a founder Trigvi, of like Trigvi. Trigvi. Okay, he's Trigvi. a senior Trigvi. Trigvi Olson. Okay, his senior advisor to the Lincoln Project. This is not a radical Democrat, right? He's worked for uh, senior levels of Republican politics and spent two decades training people from 40 countries struggling to build democracies for the International Republican Institute, which was led by the late Senator John McCain. So this is not a um, radical leftist. And the, the, the name of the article that, that he wrote for the Lincoln Project is What Can I Do? Seven Rules for Defending Our Democracy. Um, it's it's an interesting read. It's an important read. It's one of many out there that just says, what can I do? What can we do? You know. Look, Joe Biden is our president. He's a decent man. He will make mistakes. He's entitled to make mistakes. He's also entitled to change direction and change his mind and pivot to where he can see the best advantages. He knows where he's at. Um, in some ways, uh, you know, given that we're so prone to the as i mentioned before this this five second rule you know about uh, our attention span he may be here ending up stronger in the long run because he is the he is the tortoise and we're not seeing all the things that he'd done but he actually when i was reading uh, about the uh, nominations for the supreme court he's had more folks appointed there than any other president in recent memory the judges and, the judges, for yes, the judges, and and uh, I think I read that eighty percent of them are women, um, and over half were, were uh, people of color. So he is, uh, you know, moving forward. He's getting work done. It's not glamorous, sexy, noisy, splashy, chaotic, um, uh, traumatic. It's just getting the work of government done. That doesn't sell very well, being you know the the postal delivery man. But you you don't you try not having the postal delivery man. That's basically what we had for the last uh, uh, you know four years before that, and and it's chaos. And so he is right, the, the post not not delivery man, the postal letter carrier. Uh, sorry, sorry for my. Uh, slip, but it, it, it basically sometimes my postal letter carrier is a man, and sometimes uh, uh, a woman. So, um, well, that, anyway, that's the point is, is that Joe Biden, he's, he is going to, he's our president for the next three years, barring some disaster. And I agree 100% with what Tim said. He should not endorse or suggest that he's not going to run again until maybe you know, June or, or March of, of that election year, if that were the case. And if I were him, I wouldn't endorse anybody. I would throw it open and see who rises to the top for the masses and who's going to be the strongest candidate. And I think that's what he would do. Um, okay. Well, we're out of time. So what I'd like to do is uh, wrap up uh, with just really brief comments, just going around the three of you. So um, why don't we start with Jay and then uh, just finish up with a, a closing comment for this topic. Thank you, Jay. Well, um, yeah, I, 
I, I don't think that, that um, you know, uh, putting a candidate forward, a ticket forward, um, it should happen immediately, but it should happen soon. And I would say sooner than the year of the election, that's too late. Um, that I don't think he's going to make it. If you uh, just look at the way he he walks and talks, uh, he's doesn't have the strength that he had a year ago. Uh, so uh, we need somebody who is apparently strong. Uh, that's one thing. Um, yeah, and the other thing is um, all the advice we're getting about what to do. Um, it's it's very hard to avoid the noise. Uh, I get, for example, you know, hundreds of requests every day for money from all these organizations. And I have learned to be suspicious of them. Mm -hmm. I have learned to be suspicious uh, on, on a wolf in sheep's clothing. And I have learned to be suspicious of organizations which are out there raising money for their own pockets. I have learned to be suspicious about organizations which are don't really represent you know, the people they say they're representing and so forth. I wish that somebody could, you know, emerge as an organ. They all want money, right? Um, as an organization that could actually do some stuff with that money. But there are so many of them that I can't, I can't trust a lot of them. Uh, and, and maybe uh, Vladimir Putin is uh, putting some of those out there on the internet too. Uh, can't, you can't overlook that possibility. So what I'm saying is uh, if there was an organization that, um, that emerged as a legitimate representative of the Democratic Party uh, and of um, you know, these principles, um, that would help. So far, it hasn't happened. OK, thank you. Tim, wrap up briefly. Uh, when I think about what came before uh, Joe Biden was Trump and what could come after Joe Biden as far as a GOP candidate, I'm reminded of an old Turkish proverb, and that is, when a clown moves into the palace, the clown doesn't become a king, the palace becomes a circus. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't care who's there on the Democratic ticket uh, for Joe Biden or after Joe Biden, it's going to be a whole lot better than what's lined up uh, as potential candidates in the GOP party, uh, because the GOP party has disintegrated into a laughing stock, into a circus itself. So no matter what it is, who it is, uh, it's going to be 10 times better than whatever what any candidate the GOP could put up there. Interesting point. Thank you, Tim. Winston, final comment. Oh, I love that quote, Tim. That's really good. Uh, that proverb from Turkey. Um, yeah, maybe, who knows? Maybe the Republicans will snap out of it and they'll realize that uh, they need to reclaim their party their principled conservative party, which moves towards the center. And maybe they'll, they'll run someone like the governor of, of Maryland or someone who is not prone to histrionics and, and who is a principled Republican conservative person who seems like, OK, we can deal with this with this fellow. Um, and maybe the, and like Tim said, the Democrats could do the same. They just choose someone who is a moderate person appealing to the majority of voters across the spectrum so that we can continue to have a sane, stable, adult um, person in the, in the White House surrounded by competent, um, clear thinking, rational and kind uh, humans. And uh, let's hope for the best there. Um, and I, you know, I still want to have faith in our country, men and women, that we can make those right choices. It's a matter of all of us educating ourselves and each other and uh, making the right choices. Very good. Thank you. We are out of time. And uh, uh, thank you, Jay Fidel, Tim Apicella, and Winston Welch for participating today in this discussion. And thank you, viewers for viewing. And uh, this show will be on again next week. Um, we'll see you then. Aloha and mahalo.